Good afternoon, my camper building compadres. And in this episode, I'm hoping to save you a few quid when you're painting your camper van cabinets. So while we was at the International Campervan Show, we got loads of good feedback on these cabinets. Few people actually thinking that we'd bought them from B&Q. I don't know if that was a compliment or not. But anyway, our cabinets, if you looked in previous videos, are literally made from scratch and then hand painted. When I told people that we painted them, they said, wow, you must have used really expensive furniture paint to get such a, you know, a good finish uh, across this. And the answer was no. You do not need expensive furniture paint, expensive lacquer, expensive undercoat, expensive primer to get a good finish. And I'm hoping that today I'm going to be able to explain to you how we did it to save you a few quid wasting money on expensive stuff that you really, really don't need. So anybody that follows us on Facebook or is friends with me personally on Facebook will have seen the trials and tribulations that we had when we first decided that we were going to paint these cabinets. We went out and spent... not. A, silly amounts of money but we went out and bought things that really really weren't required the first one was something that we was recommended to uh, through a facebook page which was valspar trade uh, primer and undercoat so this stuff is you're supposed to paint this on um first before you color i wish you had like you know, like heavy vision so you could feel how heavy this tin of paint still was we didn't end up using hardly any of it because Although it might be good for some applications and some jobs for this, it just wasn't needed. No undercoat is needed. The next thing we did uh, was at the same time we bought the colour of the paint that we wanted. Um, this was, again, we got it from B&Q, but it was their own brand to try and keep the cost down a bit. Um, because things, you know, like furniture paint are mega expensive, especially if you go for the big brand names. Um, so we went for uh, home b and q home brand furniture paint uh again just was not needed it wasn't needed whatsoever um and we didn't get a really good finish from it we also went out and bought furniture paint lacquer the lacquer that is made especially for that furniture paint streaky as you like this was the worst lacquer we used so my dad told me, and I should have listened, but I didn't, just use any paint, any paint you want, as long as it's matte. Make sure you use a matte paint. If you use um, especially a gloss, you're going to show up any tiny imperfections uh, in your material. Uh, so don't use a gloss paint. Try and avoid using satin. Uh, you think, well, I want it to be clean, I want it to be wipeable, I want it to be durable. It does not matter. Get a mat. It doesn't even have to be a wipeable mat. Just get any old matte paint. We ended up going, we actually mixed our own paint because we couldn't find a colour that we wanted. Uh, so we, we had a tin of white. This was just a random tin of white. Um, good home. Is that B&Q? I'm not sure, but it was just pure brilliant white. Um, and then we found a blue as close to what we wanted as we could. Uh, and then we mixed them up, and I'm not sure if I can sh And this is the colour that we ended up with. Um, you can see that. I'm going to get a better light. Let's have a look. Not sure that you're getting a really good vision of what that colour is. Hang five, I'll get a bit out of the tip. Now, this is our spare paint, so you should never do this, and I'll explain for why later. But, 
I don't know why I'm showing you this. I've just shown you the cabinet. Anyway, so this is the colour that we ended up going for. And I'll explain why that's a massive no-no and hopefully my dad doesn't see this YouTube video because he'll go mental. Um, so, any paint. Any paint you like, use matte because it's going to hide any slight imperfections. Uh, gloss, the shine in the gloss is really going to pick them out and show you them like on a big template. They'll just, as soon as you paint gloss or satin paint onto your wood, it's going to go, that looks crap, that looks crap, that looks crap, that looks crap, and you're going to spend the rest of your life trying to sort it out. Matte paint hides so much more of the imperfections, especially when you're painting on things like ply um, that can have little marks, blemishes, you know, tiny hairline cracks gloss paint is really going to bring them up and show you where they are and you don't want that so make sure you use a matte paint then because you want it to be durable you want it to be wipeable you're going to need to varnish it or lacquer it whichever you want to call it and again we just went for the wilco uh, varnish but again get a matte varnish you're still going to get a nice sheen because you're putting varnish on you're going to get a nice shine to it um, but it's not going to be an obvious tacky looking shine uh, and again it's not going to bring out all those imperfections make sure you're using a matte varnish now the method behind doing this is apply your paint obviously you're going to apply your paint uh, build a couple of layers up maybe put two or three layers on and at this point then you can start to sand uh, you only need to nib it, you can use a scotch pad uh, or a, a light abrasive sandpaper um, and just nib it off, smooth it off and then once you've smoothed it off you can then apply another couple of coats uh, once you're happy with the finish then you can go over and put a couple of coats of your matte, cheap matte varnish on. So to do our entire kitchen we had to buy, uh, we bought a small tin of blue uh, which is obviously in the bin now so i can't show you uh, but again it was just a matte uh, bog standard blue um, and two and a half liters um, of the white and mixing them both together obviously at some point you might find that you need to use filler you know you might have banged your ply you might have chipped something you might have cut something a bit wonky and you need to fill it in uh, again you don't want to be using wood filler Although wood filler is fantastic, car body filler is much easier to work with. Get yourselves down to your local motorist discount store. Store? Shop. Get yourselves down to your local motorist discount shop. Centre? Shop? Anyway. Get yourselves down somewhere that sells body filler. You want two part filler with hardener. It's much easier to work with and gives a much smoother finish. You will find the first time that you put a coat on, the area where you've filled is gonna be a different color. Uh, that's just because of the different porousness. Porousness? May have invented a word there. The different porousnessness of the filler and the wood. So it's gonna soak up the paint quicker uh, on your first coat, but then after that, it'll cover that filler, no problem whatsoever, and you're always gonna be putting a few coats on anyway. Build it up, nib it off with some sandpaper or a scotch pad, another couple of layers, and then put on your varnish. What I was saying earlier about dipping that stick in there and my dad going mental, what you really, really should do it's like when you paint in your house, usually what I do is I pour it into a roller and I use my roller and we go rolling around all over the place. But when it comes to brush, especially if two people are working on one room, you then take the can. You don't go back to the roller tray with your brush. You take the can and you paint the can. In your van, I really wouldn't do that. You shouldn't really do it in your house. And I wouldn't have thought a professional painter and decorator would do that. What I would suggest you do, and this is what we did all the way through, um, but only because we was told we had to, by popsicle he uh, made sure of that is decant this into another container at the end of the day that container can be washed out it can be rinsed away and you're not taking your brush and dipping it in and contaminating your paint all the bits any bits that are left on if you pick any bits of dust up if you pick any bits of crap up you think over time when you're using it and then another day you're using it and then another day eventually you're going to contaminate your paint and it won't be any good so make sure you decant into a paint kettle or a separate pot or something that can be washed out and completely cleaned after every use that's probably one of the best tips that we got and it's give us much 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 better results in the long run by doing that the next thing i need to talk about is application so 
Application. We found doing large areas, you really want to use a gloss roller. Um, you know the ones I mean, little sponge thing. Uh, if you're doing a large area, you're going to want to use a gloss roller uh, for speed to get it done, you know, quicker, like a full wall. But you are going to get roller marks. Ideally, you want to get the rollers what are flat on one side, round on the other. Uh, that means you can work your way across the wall uh, and it helps get rid of the roller marks. However, we did find that rolling on um, the lacquer was a massive no-no. Anything varnished, whenever we did the varnish, we tried um, on the big areas thinking, right, well, get, roll the varnish on, get it on quick like we did the paint. Whatever you do with a roller and varnish, you are going to get those marks. I may be corrected. If, I, if somebody can correct me and tell me a better way, I am happy to hear about it. I'm always up for constructive criticism. Stick it in the comment section. Um, but whenever and whatever we did, did whatever which way it loose, we got roller marks when it came to varnish. So we had to varnish everything with a brush. Um, and the best way we found was to go up and down, up and down, up and down, then left and right, left and right, left and right. Then again, one last coat. And um, when it starts to it starts turning and it's getting a little bit tacky. One last go up and down, left and right, and you can get rid of every brush mark, every roller mark, and get a really, really, really fantastic finish um, on walls, doors. Um, you can really can get a good finish. So hopefully you can take the few little tips that I've given you there um, and go out and buy yourself some run of the mill cheap paint and get your camper looking absolutely fantastic for next to no money at all. Even if you've got some paint at home. As I say, we already had um, some white. We mixed it up with some, a small pot of blue that we got from the shops and we actually did that kitchen really, really cheap. So hopefully you've enjoyed that little snippet of information that's hopefully going to save you a few quid in the long run when you're going out and purchasing paint for your camper van. And I'll say it one more time, you do not need expensive paint. You do not need expensive furniture paint. You don't have to go for the Pro range. You don't have to go for the Valspar or whatever brands, you know, the brands have a top end range. You do not need it. The cheapest paint is just as good for this application. Um, as long as you put a few coats on, nib it off with a sandpaper to get a nice smooth texture and then layer another few paints, then layer another few paint. The then put another few layers of paint on and all is good. If you enjoyed the video, please, please, please hit the subscribe button. Comment below if you've got any questions whatsoever, like, share and all that jazz. See you in the next one.